All right, where were we? Like, I just had this coffee and it is blowing my brain off. Like, my eyes are shaking. Like, oh my gosh, I've never knew coffee could be this strong. Like, usually I get a $1 coffee from 7-Eleven. Um, the lattes, the cappuccinos, the flat whites, they don't really do anything. But when you get a long black, it will literally knock your socks off. Like, my heart is going... Whoa! Like, welcome to my channel. My name is Jay. Today I'm going to talk about writing. Woo! But today I'm going to be talking about a very special human being called Hubert Selby Jr. This is his book right here. Hubert Selby Jr. Um, writes prose in a very, very different way to most writers I've ever seen. Number one, He's brave, it doesn't give a fuck. And number two, he writes in a sort of stream of consciousness. It's mixed between stream of consciousness, blah, 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 stream of consciousness, and journalism-esque, straight to the point story. The thing that is so amazing with Hubert Selby Jr. is the fact that he really doesn't try to be pretty. Famously, he said he gave a really um, inspirational piece of writing advice to another writer. I don't write it, I get out of the way and let the writing happen. And you really can see exactly what he's talking about when he's writing this because it just feels as if he was on this on his typewriter and he was just like <laughs> Because it literally reads as if someone just wrote this whole manuscript in one day. It feels as if he just locked himself in a room and just wrote the whole thing without even correcting himself. And he does a lot of grammar mistakes, which I really love because he does it on purpose. He said He's really famous for using slashes instead of apostrophes. It's because he said the slash key was closer than the apostrophe key on the typewriter. So he's like, I don't have time, I'm just gonna do this because you can flow with it. Okay, so the reason why I'm talking about Hubert Selby Jr. is because for me, he's a really great writer to break down and try and understand his style if you want to do street writing. Because since I've started reading him, I started to be able to let go of all my poetry inside my head and just write the scene that's happening in front of my eyes. Street writing, the whole mission is to capture a moment in time. It's like you are the vessel of a time capsule and you eat the moment and vomit it onto the paper. Writing in a way that, um, in a way that Hubert Selby Jr. writes, in a very free form, just capture the moment as it is in all its ugly ways and beautiful is kind of a great, great, great way to do street writing because when you're street writing, you want to be as fast as you can. And there's many times when I'll be watching a scene, for example, um, a man, he's yelling, the devil is here, the devil is here, they're all around us and he's screaming at people and I'm too busy trying to find the poetry in his words. And actually I miss a lot of the beauty because most of the real raw and honest beauty that you get from street writing is the truth, is the fact. And once it's on paper, then you can start playing around with poetry. But if you don't have the fact and truth on paper, it's really difficult to, to make it because you kind of lose a bit of the magic, you lose a bit of the charm. Right, if you want to do street writing, so if you want to write about life on the street, real life, document life, Hubert Selby Jr. is a fantastic way to learn how to be a note taker. Mainly his writing is, um, Tom walked into the bar, lit a cigarette, it burned. Tralala looked at him, she rubbed her panties. Stuff like this. Very bum, 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 bum. And he kind of shows you how to just get straight to the point without, being, without trying to be anything. And that's what I really like. There's no arrogance in his writing. And I fucking love that. I hate writing with arrogance. And this is kind of what I feel. But a lot of times when you start writing, you kind of want to use really big words. And you kind of want to show you are so well versed in your dictionary. So you would say, the sky was blah, 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 blah. And the clouds were blah, 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 blah. And Tom was walking. Blah, 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 blah. The thing is, most... You might shoot me for this, but a lot of writers use really elaborate words, not because they're masters of the craft. It's because they're hiding 
they're hiding their insecurities. It's like Hemingway, like Hemingway was, look how simple his writing is, but look how powerful it is. You know, he doesn't hide, he's fully vulnerable to open fire because he's got no long words to hide behind. Whereas a lot of, a lot of writers try hide behind their long words. And when people say, this is bad, this is bad, they'll just say, oh, you don't understand this, or you don't understand that. But quite frankly, a lot of these writers are fucking shit. So what I'm trying to say is Hubert Selby Jr. is a great way to strip arrogance from writing. And he will show you the world which is horrific, but it's horrific in a really beautiful way. And maybe it's horrific because he wants to show you that writing can be horrific, but beautiful in the same way. And he doesn't have to be pretentious. So I'm gonna give an example of how Hubert Selby Jr. writes. And let me tell you, this book is very, very, very vulgar to the point where I cringe often. There's everything that's wrong with humanity is pretty much imprinted into this book. So if you are a tame reader and if you get thrown off from very ugly ways of looking at life, I don't recommend you read this because you'll just have a panic attack and start yelling at everyone. But if, you, if you're willing and you're able to leave your judgment at the door and try and just try to understand the world from a different perspective, there'd be a, it, it's a pretty nasty perspective, but there's always things to learn from good, bad. There's a pretty horrendous, <laughs> horrendous story about a prostitute called Cha La La. It's one of the most horrific endings I've ever read, to be honest. It's, ugh. but. Let me see if I can find it. Chalala was 15 the first time she was laid. There was no real passion, just diversion. She hung out in the Greeks with the other neighborhood kids. Nothing to do, sit and talk, listen to the jukebox, drink coffee, bum cigarettes, everything a drag. She said yes in the park. Three or four couples finding their own tree in grass. Actually, she didn't say yes. She said nothing. Tony or Vinny or whoever it was just continued. They all met later at the exit. They grinned at each other. The guys felt real sharp. The girls walked in front and talked about it. They giggled and alluded. Tralala shrugged her shoulders. Getting laid was getting laid. Why all the bullshit? She went to the park often. She always had her pick. The other girls were as willing but played games. They liked to tease and giggle. Tralala didn't fuck around. Nobody likes a cock teaser. Either you put out or you don't. That's all. And she had big tits and she was built like a woman. So yeah, this is a very, very um, immoral story, I have to say. And please let me tell you, I am not one for underage sex and I am not one for racism, for homophobia. Everyone is equal in my eyes. To put it into perspective, Adam Ginsberg said, last exit to Brooklyn will explode like a rusty hellish bombshell over America and still eagerly be read in a hundred years. There's a lot to be learned actually from the really ugly truths of life and the really ugly stories of life. There's a lot of wisdom to be found in all these horrific places. And I kind of find that um, Hubert Selby Jr. writes it to not only show some sort of humanity and humility in this ungodly, war-torn underbelly of society, but he does, he writes this book as if you literally stepped into this, into this hellish world and he writes it as if everything's normal. He writes it as if you could be standing next to the person and everything that's happening is normal. It's, it's just, it's, it's life. It's the way it is. And I find that's the most beautiful thing about Hubert Selby Jr. Because I feel as if when he writes, he doesn't write to just go, rah, 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 you know, to, to make you feel uncomfortable. He writes the truth of really what happens in the underbelly of society. And I find that reading Hubert Selby Jr., he gives me confidence to actually document the really ugly truths that I've found on the street because I've seen some horrific, horrific things um, in Melbourne. And I probably can't post a lot of it on, on, on social media because people might say, oh, you're this, you're that, you're this. Why would you write this? Why would you write that? But the fact is, literature is designed to make you think. It's designed to show you another perspective. And Hubert Selby Jr. does do that. Yes, it's very disturbing. And to be honest, I wouldn't want to get in his mind. But he does show you 
how the malicious and dark people think. It's kind of like a psychology book. And I found that meeting a few people, darker souled people on the street that I've met, I can actually understand them a little better by reading something like this because what they think's normal is not normal to the average person and what they think's good is not good to the average person. What they think's bad is not bad to the average person. And to really understand these sorts of people because everyone's different in the world and kind of malicious people do exist in this world. But if you can understand them on a deeper level, you can understand why they're this way and you can understand some wisdom they share because they're not all bad. No one in the world is 100% bad. They've still got things to benefit to society. They've still got things to, to share that, that they know, that they can only learn from the horrific things they've done, which I'm not telling anyone to go be a serial killer, but I'm pretty sure certain serial killers have learned certain things through what they've done. And that's why we're so obsessed with, with true crime, because we want to understand the psychology of a serial killer. We don't watch a serial killer documentary because we want to be a serial killer. It's the same as reading a book. You don't read a book about what happens in here because you want to be the people in this book. You don't do that. You do it because you're interested. And what I want to say is, I feel like today's literature and today's attitude with reading, a lot of people are shy to say they read certain things or they like certain things and want to understand certain things because maybe they're bad people. Because now more than ever, good and bad is very black and white. There's not much grey zone in, in, in good and bad right now. And I feel like a lot of people miss out on so much amazing literature because of they distinguish either the author's bad, therefore they cannot read the text because it's disrespectful and it's, it's, it, it, it's bad. But the thing is, a lot of the really amazing manuscripts of classical literature, to be honest, a lot of these authors were not the nicest of people, but if I let my judgment of the authors stop me from learning and studying their works and studying the amazing skills they had in terms of writing, and if I didn't deconstruct their writing just because they're bad people, that makes me ignorant. That takes away my chance of becoming a better writer. And I believe if you really want to improve yourself, you can't just listen to good people. There's a lot of bad people who are amazing at certain crafts of art, but still you kind of, you don't have to like the author. I'm not saying that I like many authors or I'm not saying I like any author who's racist. No, I don't like that. But that should not stop me from trying to understand how they write and trying to understand how they make their words flow. Because if I didn't try to understand how they write and make their words flow, I wouldn't be a very good writer. And I'm still learning now, I'm not saying I'm a great writer, but what I'm trying to say is Hubert Selby Jr. is a great example of teaching you how to just throw your judgment out of the window and just read and just try to understand it and just, and just flow with the pages. So usually when I go to the street, I bring my notebook with me and it's jam packed of notes of literally everything I see on the street. So I, I wrote my notes in my notebook and I did that. And what I do is I transfer my notes to my laptop, which I've got right here. And then what I do is I go through my notes and the notes are basic pinpoints of what happened. So for example, the sun was out people of Melbourne were smiling, a lady with half a mouthful of teeth was screaming, stuff like this. And this is an example of my writing, which it's very, it's a little similar to Hubert Selby's, but mine's maybe not as dark. And I, I try to find a, a positive twist, whereas Hubert Selby Jr. just lets, lets the horrific world eat you. And that's kind of the charm of his book. You just literally open the pages and you speed through like a race car. And there's not much light in that book. It's only 99% darkness. Whereas my book, I want to have 80% darkness, 20% light. And I want the light to be at the end. So it kind of goes, bow. So here's my piece. Dear stranger, yesterday the sun came out 
and so did the people of Melbourne, smiling for a change. A lady with half a mouthful of teeth, smudged pink lipstick and a skirt so short she looked as if she belonged on a street corner, wailed at passing strangers. Fuck off! Fuck off! You can't! Her tone of voice rippled through every age and gender, as if possessed by a demon, riding high like a little girl, then low like a wife beater, cursing at invisible angels around her. A flamboyant man smoking a cigarette stopped in his tracks, told her to fuck off with a flick wrist because she spat in him. Then he slapped her across the face. The lady smiled, went full exorcist, shoved her hands down her skirt, screamed, <laughs> rubbing her crotch in a man's voice. Then she slapped him silly across the ears. The man ran away, calling her a bitch. Five minutes later, the lady started spilling racist, racist slurs at my partner, Echo. So I went over to ask the lady why she hates the world so much, hoping to stop her hate. When I arrived, the lady went haywire. Her eyes twitched. Her mouth gurned around and around. Her fingernails dug into her palms. Then, when I asked, What has the world done to you to make you hurt so hard? She went silent, as if I had a gun to her head. She didn't know how to react to my eyes. Void of fear, nothing to eat. She didn't know how to react to my voice, void of hostility, anger and hate, nothing to eat. She only knew how to react to fear, hate and hurt, because that's all she knows. It feeds her, and in that moment, watching her cower inside herself like a little girl, her story spilled from her eyes like the hate she vomits onto innocent strangers' minds, screaming, hating, because she was once born innocent, like me and you. And in her mind, she doesn't think it's fair that me and you don't have to feel the cruel, cruel hurt of this world too. I'm going to give advice for street writing. So advice for writing about real life. Number one, when you take notes, take notes as a very journalistic way of taking notes. So for example, a guy screaming certain words, he picks up a hammer smashes the concrete, walks off. Example. So, you'd write, the guy walks over, screams, exact, write the exact words, picks up a hammer, hits it, concrete smashes, he walks away. Simple as simple. Okay. When you've got that exact moment in time captured on your notebook, then go back to it and think deeper. Think more poetically. And then you can kind of bridge the gaps. And then that is how you create my style of prose. I feel like the more simple and the more straightforward a piece of writing is that anybody can relate to, your meaning hits. For example, how I see writing, you set a scene, scene is done, cool. You set a character, character's in. Put the dialogue in there, dialogue, cool. Now, you always need to have a meaning at the end of your piece. I'm talking about short form, like one page pieces. If the piece doesn't have a meaning, it's just fluff. For me personally, if I read a poem or I read a prose piece, a one page prose piece, and there's no meaning in there but fancy words, to me that's fluff. It will just evaporate into the digital wasteland of social media. But if there's always a meaning at the end, that's not fluff. That doesn't just evaporate. That has to crumble because meaning holds so much power, so much strength. It can change people's lives. But fancy words can't, aesthetic can't, but pure meaning can. And what I wanna say is, you can use aesthetic, you can use your style of writing, but always have a meaning at the end. Because if there's no meaning, it will dissolve. But if there's a meaning, it will crumble. And crumbling takes a lot longer to evaporate into the world than a dissolved does, doesn't it? So that's my advice. If you're gonna write, write with meaning. Write with confidence, write with courage. Don't give a fuck. And just write real, write raw, write right now. Go on, pull out your notebook, give it a go. Try write. Just do it. Just fucking do it. I think you can do it. I'm sure you can do it. If you're watching this, if you haven't done it, I'll be mad. Do it. All right then. Just do it. See ya.